It's great to be talking to you today. Um, but thank you so much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Of course, of course. Is that an Indiana Jones shirt you're wearing right now? Yes, it is. Dr. Jones. I cannot believe they're coming out with another one. I'm just saying. <laughs> I know, I know. And the, and the whole thing, too, is, is like, you know, um, I saw the, I hate to admit this, but I saw the first one when I was a kid in the theater. And it was the first movie I ever saw on my own, you know. And so, so it was always a big deal for me. But I know it's like. It's it's just one of those endearing things that goes on and on, kind of like Survivor. <laughs> yes, <that> is correct. <laughs> now, now, um, I, I'm sorry for making you go through this again. I'm probably sure you have to explain this a lot to a lot of people because you're getting the same question. So please forgive me for for going into this again. But we saw what happened um, to you during the first challenge uh, last night. What exactly happened? Take us through um, um, what happened to you and, and what caused the injury. Um, so, you know, when you, when you start off, you start off, you know, and your adrenaline level is so high, your, yeah. your nerves are going nuts. Like you're ready, you're just ready to go and you shoot out of a can. Yeah. You know, so I was, I was actually watching running down the beach and my form looked amazing, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm running down the beach and I go underneath the first one and I'm like, yes, let's go. And then I get to the second one and now I can rewind a little bit. The right. shirt that I was wearing didn't give me the give that I oh. need to have to move. Right. And I am blaming it on the shirt because I had the skin on my arm. Like, I, there's a scar right here that that hit the ground because I wasn't able to extend my arms fully out. My arms were like this. And yeah. what happened was that hit and did not allow my body to go down underneath. Oh, so normally gosh. you go like this. Yeah. Go under, but I was like this. Yeah. Like this. So and my head was right there, boom, hit it, face in the mud, and then come up, just not knowing where I was. Yeah. Now, uh, you know, as an aside, I also cover professional wrestling. And so I know, um, you know, many people don't know this, but there's something called blading where this is how wrestlers get blood. Now, um, most of the time, if you get cut up here, it can bleed or appear to be a lot more, like a lot worse than it actually is. How was your injury when it was treated? What did they say? Because it was really hard to tell from watching it how severe this is. I mean, obviously it affected you in a big way. How severe was this? So yes, yeah, so like you were saying, like they, I, I used to watch. It's WWE now with WWF. There you back go. In the day, you know, you see guys getting cut, and you're like, oh my god, it's going to be horrible, and it's just yeah. skin, and they, you know, whatever. But the what mine was is I hit, and it pushed. Like it did push the skin back. Oh. It wasn't. It wasn't like it was like a. It wasn't a gash. Yeah, yeah. It was like a, a definite, like a skin. But it that was that was. Wow. Famous comedian Bernie Mac says, "I'm a you know bust your head over to the white meat." It was to the <laughs> white meat, and that's what we saw. You saw that. Then it turned Jeez. like in the. You saw it turn red. Yeah. So anyway, so that was that was that. But the the traumatic aspect of it was just my, the force of my body at that point in time was about a hundred and 182 pounds. So you almost like and knocked yourself out. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially my entire body weight just came in and boom, you know, oh God. Uh, now, now explain to us though, cause we saw you, uh, you know, they, they, the medical crew was there. They checked on you. They, they allowed you to continue. Then at camp, you started experiencing problems again. What happened during that time? I mean, everybody was alert and everybody was concerned. What happened during that time? So once once I hit my head, there was immediate pain and the pain was there. Um, it was a seven out of 10. And it oh. stayed that way the entire day. Like we we left and we went, you know, went so far to our camp and it yeah. like pounding the entire time. Um, I was actually told by the medical staff because they did a great job, I might add. They did an yeah. amazing job. Um, they told me, Bruce, sit still, don't do anything. You know, your tribe's got you, you're good. And right. in my mind, I'm like, nope, nope, got to keep working. Work, 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 work. <laughs> um, but with doing all of that, I didn't allow myself to kind of, I don't want to say heal, because it would have been too short of a period of time. Right. But it didn't allow my body to start doing what it needed to do. Yeah. So I was adding more stress to it. And then here we are, you know, I got I, there was one moment in time that I was doing something and I jolted forward. And when I jolted forward like that, I yeah. went straight to a 10. Oh, and it was like, it was like having a migraine that would not quit. And it was just sitting my whole entire head, everything, my neck, you know, everything hurt. 
Yeah, because again, I was I was concerned about your neck when that happened. Because you know, I again, I know about wrestling. I know how easy it is to to injure those parts, especially your neck when there's a sudden jolt like that. Um, when you went, were taken off the island and went to the medical facility. What was the diagnosis there? What did they say to you? Well, they did a CT scan, right. um, and the CT scan came back negative, which was great. Um, but they, they definitely said that there was a concussion that was there. Oh, and I, I coached football for 11 years. And yeah. when you coach football, you have to be, you know, certified in concussions and, you know, yeah. and CPR the whole nine hours. But I knew that I was concussed at the beginning. Oh. I for the sensitivity to light, you yeah. know, um, just subtle movements, the nausea. When I hit my head, I, I honestly thought I was going to throw up. I might have actually gagged. When I was actually on the island getting ready to go with my head pounding, um, I was I was nauseous at that point in time as well. So it's just – it was kind of like the onset, and then it was just a gradual increase to the end. Well, and, yeah, and I mean, that's- if, you're con- if you're concussed, that's something quite serious. You can't just, like – get up and go after something like that. What do you think about the uh, survivor uh, medical crew? Cause again, they were overworked on that episode and, and they mm-hmm. seem to do an amazing job as always. Yeah. I was their main focus. Yeah. It wasn't the show. It wasn't, it wasn't, you know, how we're going to get good TV. I was their main focus. And I think they did an absolutely amazing job. Amazing job. Um, you know, you're, you're with them and they're walking you through stuff. They're talking yeah. to you about, you know, they're taking care of the physical uh, aspect of it as much as humanly possible. Um, and then once they made that determination and they said, Bruce, you know, we're yeah. going to pull you from the game. I did not want to go, obviously, uh, but I knew that I had to go because yeah. they didn't know if there was a brain bleed or not from the injury. So it's, you know, best yeah. to put the best foot forward. Yeah. Now, um, you know, even, even the preseason, I mean, you seem to have going through your resume and everything seem to have really great potential to not only be a great player, but also a great uh, personality on the show. Now, since everything has evolved, has there any been, because again, the comments were last night, I'm checking through and it's like, I hope he can come back. I hope he's invited back. I hope there's a lot of support there. So have they asked you to come back and would you come back? <laughs> um, did you listen to Jeff's podcast last night? No, I haven't yet. <laughs> <gasps> Oh my goodness, about 14 minutes in, Jeff says, cue the music. And he, he extended an open invitation for me to come back and play again. Awesome. And, w- and will you accept that invitation? I mean, obviously, I'm just fitting with your skin. <laughs> <laughs> all day, all day. <laughs> now, now, I asked this of, of all the survivors that I talked to, because again, you know, they take so many hours, you film 24 hours a day, and they condense that down. And we only mm-hmm. see you can because obviously it's a TV show. You can't fit everything in. Is there anything about your journey or your time, you know, bonds, experiences, moments that you wish um, would have made it to the show? Um, it's a great question. They they showed me in a light that I think was perfect. Right. And the reason why is because I was not myself. Oh, and right. They don't. They wouldn't want to show someone that's not themselves. You know, yeah. I remember going through the casting process, and they were, you know, they loved who I was, who I am, because <laughs> that's how I got on the show. Like this yeah. is this is what you're talking to right now. This is me. I'm gonna have my hands going everywhere. I'm, you know, and <laughs> I, I'm the quintessential person. If you're talking to him, squirrel, and I look over here, and I'm like, wait a minute, what's that? Like, <laughs> that's that's who I am, and that yeah. is not who they could have portrayed. That is not who they could have showed. So with that being being said, I think that the editing team, in regards to myself personally, they yeah. did a great job. Now, what was their strategy? I mean, because we didn't get to see much of it, and, and, you know, that left me with some questions. What was, did you have a strategy going into the game? Did you have a focus or approach? Um, what was your thinking when you, when you headed into the game? So, another good question. Here's the thing, is that people go in with a preconceived notion as to what they're going to do. Right, And if you have a plan, your plan can get blown up quickly. I didn't technically have a plan other than doing what is in the bylaws of, of Survivor. Yeah. It is a social experiment. So my job is to be who I am, which is a social person. I'm going to talk to people. I'm going to have the conversations. And this, and then the strategic aspect of it will come right. once, once I know that I'm having good conversations with people or people are, you know, if... 
if I perceive that someone maybe doesn't like me, I'm like, all right, fine. They, they don't like me and right. I'll do what I need to do to be able to have a conversation or, or, or avoid and then work together with, it's, it's funny. You, you should be able to have the ability to work with someone that doesn't like you. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, so, but my whole strategy going in was just take it as it comes. Like this is, this is a game, you know, in a game has, you play Uno, you got a reason why you want to play it. <laughs> you know, you're, you're trying to get to the last card and yell out Uno. Well, I'm, I'm trying to get to the last, the last votes and have them all write my name down. So in doing that, I think that the social aspect is probably, the best, is in my mind, the best way yeah. to go. Now, um, obviously, uh, you know, we only get to see bits and, you know, snippets and, and there's three tribes this, you know, this season. So it kind of cuts down that even more. Give us some insight into what's going on at Tika. What's what the tribal politics are, what the atmosphere is. And how did you fit into all of that? Because, again, I mean, unfortunately, with all the you know, other issues, we didn't get to see as much as insight into the tribe uh, with that episode. But maybe you could give us some some insight yourself. <laughs> The real, the real only insight that I can give, because again, I wasn't, I wasn't in the right frame of mind to be right. able to overly extend, actually not even overly extend, just to be able to have all the conversations that I wanted to have. Like there were times I wanted to go and, you know, talk to multiple people, but I just couldn't do it right. physically. Yeah. Um, but as far as for the Tika tribe, the Tika tribe, uh, absolutely amazing. Like. Right. Every single person brought something that that was authentic to them to the tribe, which made the tribe excellent. In my my personal and humble opinion, like we were we were a great tribe. It just is what it is. Now, was there any talk? I mean, uh, you know, obviously you're injured. You're you're trying to deal. You don't even now don't even know the extent of the injury um, because it's hard to decide that. Well, how was the tribe with that? Was did you get the sense that uh, you know uh, they you know they're behind you? Or anything? Was there any talk about okay, uh oh, I'm kind of the I might be the weak link here. This might have you know hurt my my story. How was it, how was it like for you there? I'm a I'm a survivor player, a survivor fan. Um, I definitely felt that I was the weakest link at that point in time. Oh, Reason right. being, I physically I I was physically not able to do the things that I felt that I should have been able to do because I didn't have the I didn't have the ability to. My tribe did not allow me to think that way, which is awesome with it. They, you know, they did what they they did what they needed to do, and we all worked together yeah. to get things done. And not at any point in time did any of them, in my estimation, and in being able to see, like, did they say, uh, you know, yeah. bye bye, Bruce, we gotta go, right. you know? Right. Well, again, and sometimes in Survivor, there's those issues that transcend the game. And there's things that, mm -hmm. you know, the human level of the game. And that's what I like to see because that's when you get to see the true character of people when those moments happen and you see how um, uh, how they react and, and to those things. So, but um, I'm getting the cutoff here. So um, it was great speaking to you, Bruce. I'm, I'm, I was so disappointed in, in what happened. I'm so glad that you've been given that offer and <laughs> I, I wish you all the best in the future. And I can't wait till we can talk again and further talk about your survivor journey. Because again, as you're saying, it's, it's not over yet by a long shot.